back to simplicity this morning again. <clears throat> uh, I'm thinking of an autumn scene. We've done a few snow scenes and uh, I'm going to put more leaves on, on these trees. Uh, here's my palette. They're, these are Cotman watercolours. And as far as I know now, they're made in China. The Windsor and Newton were owned by a French, well, they were owned by a French company, I think, the Fev. And, uh, but if they, I don't really care where the paints come from, as long as they work. But I've changed the lemon yellow to the cadmium yellow because it was very, it was hard to, to dissolve in water. It, 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 it wasn't, it's not a very strong colour. But the rest of them, these are fine. Got the uh, cadmium yellow, raw sienna, alizarin crimson, light red, ultramarine, burnt umber, and Payne's grey, and burnt sienna. Uh, give it another little bit of a clean. Um, I don't use all of them, and I was having a conversation with somebody on on Facebook and private sort of messages about about um, the difference between doing it this way or on a much bigger tray by using the paint straight out of the tube. Well, I've compromised. I, I give my paints a bit of a spray to soften them so that it's, so they don't have to throw them away at the end of the painting session, basically. I've got the old, the orig my original butcher's tray. There you are. I've used it as a palette for acrylic in the past. But there we are, that, I've had that since I first came across Ron Ranson about 30 odd years ago. Um, and it's quite heavy to hold and the water does tend to sl slosh about on it. But I think this is, this would be very good for plein air painting. But I, I don't do any of that really. I, I, I always mean to and I'm still looking for a satchel big enough to take this. Uh, and my board and have a go, go down to my local Beddington farm area which is a, a huge expanse of flat land, marsh, marshland nearby but it's slowly being built on. But it's surprising how, how many good paintings you can get from nondescript pieces of ground. So I'm going to make something up so I'm going to wet the paper all over. I've got the board about 30 degrees, probably a bit less. But I've got to compromise with the angle because of the, the filming of it with the uh, camcorder. I've, I've only got a, a simple little tripod which is very good actually, 15 pounds. It's done me for many hundreds of demos. Uh, right, a bit of bit of a warm with some sienna, not a lot. See how soft that paint is? It's not that I mean with the paint, I mean it's cheap enough, but but I I I'd be quite throwing throwing it away. We'll have water in this one, I think. Right, we'll put a put a splash of blue. See, that's a little bit caked, but but oh, we've got a nice strong mix. Remember, what you put on will dry a lot nicer. Put that in the water before you put water there. Okay, now I'll mix that with some light red. And light red is a very strong colour. And we'll the thing is not to panic. Now I'm scrubbing away at this a little bit. And we'll see what happens to that. Let's get that reflected in the water here. Okay, and I'll put a very light, maybe a bit of light red, or even a lizard and crimson, mixed with a bit of light red. See how, how dilute 
how soluble that uh, light red is. Okay, we'll see, see what happens to that. I'm going to give that a bit of a dry. The, the, uh, the, the, the red and the blue tend to separate even more so on a flat surface. And it's, uh, you can exploit that. It just gives a bit of interest. The brush has gone a bit streaky, but that might just blend in. Right, mute now. So uh, let's, oh, I've got to finish my tea. Went to, to London yesterday, we live in South London, but travelling for us Oldens is uh, free. We took our grandson to Portobello Road. Now Portobello Road is uh, near Ladbroke Grove where we have the carnival every year and is in an area of hugely expensive houses. Now Bayswater and... And there's some glorious terraces there. Millions, it costs millions. But it's a very cosmopolitan area too, as you go, go to Ladbroke Grove, a very lively community, and it's a terrific market. It really is wonderful. And especially on the nice day as it was yesterday, it was very mild for for um, February. <coughs> Not a great place for art, but there is a, one art shop there. <coughs> a very good one, well stocked. So I had a look around that. Yeah, so it's gone. It's got a bit streaky, but it's dried. It's dried lighter. So let's let's put in some strong <coughs> autumn colours here. That's a bit of a bit of umber. See how close I can make that to uh, to the uh, raw uh, burnt sienna. Let's put a bit of yellow with that and a bit of paint grey. That's Oh, that's a lovely rich colour, isn't it? Put a bit of a bit of a bank across here. Right, okay, well that's a start, isn't it? I'll, I'll take that, this is, we'll call this Mitcham, Mitcham Common or Seven Islands. So I, I love Seven Islands. It's a piece of common land. Nearby, which I've painted many times, I might put some blue behind that. Put a bit of, drop a bit of blue in at the back there. Need a cloth. Oh, it's 
flicking. Just put this bit of background, I should have done this first, but... Okay. Let's put a bit of sienna in there. Oh, that's quite, quite thick, that paint, that's uh, good. Right, we'll uh, just want to level that up a bit along the horizon. So we put a bit of Payne's grey and a bit of bit of uh, burnt umber, a lot of burnt umber. See, we've got nice rich paint. I'm going to etch some of this out. Okay. So just a little bit of a foreground coming across here. Look how lovely and soft that paint is now. Oh, lovely. So you're not really painting from dry dried up paint, it softens very easily and quickly. So that's basically it. That's a, use a card I think. Got it. I'm going to drop in a bit of dark in there, I think. Burnt umber and paint's grey. Uh, burnt umber and ultramarine. Alright, let's just put a bit of shadow in. Otherwise it's just, just be a bit too bland. But I love the colours, so they're certainly not bland. I'm going to put a flock of birds up there where those little blobs have gone. Put a bit of mint yellow in. Okay. Oops, got the card. Well, uh, just. It's very pebbly, the. the the water's edge in the island. There's a small lake or a large, very large pond with seven small islands on, on it and, uh, and it passes for a beauty spot in these parts in, in suburbia. Just take out with that card. The, you, it's not flat the paper at the moment, but you can get some nice texture with the edge of the card just by sort of scraping up. Well, I don't really like using too many mechanical techniques with painting. I certainly don't like blotting out, but. I think I'll probably dry that now. I'm blotting that out because they're, they're going to be birds. A murmuring of starlings. I mean, what a lovely word. I 
I'm, I'm just doodling this. I've, I've not got anything too much in uh, in mind, really. I'm just, I'm just painting. Um, I don't think that's looking all right. I need to just put in some reflections. Uh, let's see. If, just going across here, really. Got a hair loose here. Apart from on my head. Doing this, well, I'm going to go a bit higher, I think, because you you get some like slack water and some wind ruffled water when you look at distant lakes and things, and the shad the reflection comes much lower down. But I don't know if that's going to register. I might dry brush. No, that, that's okay. That's okay. I'm gonna give that a dry now. Mm. Headphones off. Right now, I want to put in a bit of a tree, sort of coming up there. Sort of green, greeny. Right, get a bit of bit of autumny colours on there. Right, bit of umber. Blue, just a little, stiffen up a little bit. I'm going to use a rigger on this, I think. Right, let's get some dark. Now, this is really dry now, dry brushing. Great thing about using the hake for this, and as you know, I'm a great believer in using the largest brush, brush, brush that I get away with, and only going onto the riggers and flats when it gets a little bit too difficult to use the, the hake. But it, you did get such a lovely random. Impressionist, spontaneous look. I'm not planning any of this. I don't really hold with the view that you should put a lot of planning into a painting because that way you you, you lose a bit of spontaneity. Spontaneity. Let's just, just get a bit of light off one side. Okay, that's it. Right, now we'll use the rigger. I don't like my, my sky, I have to say. But, so you can wear unlikes.
Right, I'll put these over blobs, so don't say I've overdone it. Uh, right, I want to just clean my brush. When you squeeze the water out of your brush, just squeeze, don't pull the hairs. Thirsty hike. Come on, that's what Ron Nancy used to say. Thirsty hike. Uh, that's gone over a bit too near the edge, so I'm going to just put a little bit of bushy stuff in there so we have a bit of dark. Uh, so yellow, Payne's grey, burnt umber. Oh, let's just probably can't. Well, that that help to just bring something over towards the middle. There we go. Right, okay, let's put that in a mount. Give a good idea as to whether it's passable or not. Thing is, can't, you can't put it off every time. Uh, it's always a, a struggle to find new things to say or to say things in a new, the same things in a different way. Oh, there we are. So that's quite a strong, strongly painted picture. A lot of colour in the middle of this distance, the other side of the pond. Uh, I think, just take some of that out there. Okay, we won't put any boats on because there are no boats on this lake. Let's uh, bring that camera over, let's lift it up. Oh, oh. Don't have too tight. Ah, right, okay. One thing down. Come out this. Oh, that's all right. So there we are. This is a bit regular, but uh, I'm not going to uh, change it. That's that's it. That's the painting. Saturday morning. It's. It's a mild day for February. It's quite dull, but I think it's clearing up. <coughs> so give the, the the bulbs a chance to to shoot while they can. Oh, the sky looks quite okay. Let's just go in and see what we've done. You can see the streaks. The brush was probably just a little bit dry. But anyway, there's my background trees. Awesome colours, lots of shadow. I'm not sure I like that bit there, but my birds on the, the little tiny spatters and my tree. Now, how easy was that tree? Well, there are plenty of artists who can, a good copyist. I'm not. I haven't got the eye for it, but I have a friend who used to use a light box, she probably still does, and, and we didn't realise, and we were all buying her pictures very cheaply, because they looked so spontaneous, but then we found out she was tracing around the, around the image, projected onto her paper and filling in with watercolour. Felt a bit cheated, actually. I said, oh no, everybody does it. Well, I don't. But if you're, if you're doing... Uh, buildings, castles and things, it seems a logical thing to do is to, is to be able to project, so it's been going on for hundreds of years, to project on rather than do it free freehand. But then if you look at work with John Tookie, Seago, they didn't use gadgets like that. 
and their work is fresh because it's not exact, because it expresses them rather than an image that's already there. Anyway, enough of me. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Bye bye.